This video goes along with your circ in chapter 8. It's a z score, which is z equals x minus mu, which is a population mean, divided by sigma, which is a population standard deviation. First, let's look at figure 8.3 on page 228 of your circ in textbook. This figure shows the sigma, which is the um, population standard deviation for the IQ now. They kind of change this up again for the simplicity of the textbook. They have the standard deviation at 10, and the population mean is still at 100, the mu. And then you notice there's a negative one and a positive one. These are your z-scores. And as we look down to the negative 2, we see the x equals 80, which later we'll be looking at George's, which is a z of negative 2.00. And over here, first we'll be looking at Sandra's, which is an x equals 115, which gives you a z equals 1.5. Now let's go on to Sandra's data in the book. And um, page 229, Sandra, x equals 115. So what you do is show all your steps for the professor so you can see you understand the logic of this, the formula, how this works. So z equals the individual score x minus the population mean mu divided by sigma, the population standard deviation, which is 10. So we plug it in after we show the formula, we show and tell the formula. So we put Sandra's score, which is 115 minus mu, which is 100 over the population standard deviation, which is 10. And then you show all of your math steps so he knows if you make a mathematical error, you just tripped up with the math, but you understand the concept. So the next step is 15 divided by 10 equals 1.15. So then you look at column B in your book. Column B is, that's the area from the mean to, in this case, Sandra's score, because that's the area between there to her score of 115, which is 0 point, the proportion is 0 0.4332. And then the, the next one we, we have to figure that is, since we have, which is showing from the mean to her score, then we look at, okay, we pretend this is drawn correctly, this is supposed to be a bell curve, a normal curve, so if you fold it in half, there's like 50% of the scores on both sides. So this end is from um, 0 to 100, assuming there's a 0 there. So that's 0 to 100, which is proportion is 0 0.500, or is like I was saying, 50%. Let's put another 0 there. That's why we check our work. And then we add to figure out how many number of scores are below Sandra's, because the B shows us how many are from... 100 to 115, and we add that to the other side of it, so it's the proportion of 0 0.4332 plus 0 0.5000 equals 0 0.9332. That's a proportion of scores below Sandra's score of x equals 115 is 0 0.9332, or in other words, the percentage of individuals with a score lower than Sandra's would be 93.32% of the population has an IQ score below Sandra. Now let's look at George. George has an IQ of X equals 80. And then he has, um, so we're going to plug his in. His goes from page 229 and it continues on page 233 because you have those little shaded tables with the columns in between that tells you what the proportion for the z-scores. So let's look at George's IQ score. X equals 80. So what you do is, again, z equals his score minus the population mean mu, which is 100, over the population standard deviation, which is 10. So we put in, again, we show all our work. So we put George's score in here for the x. 80 minus 10, I mean 80 minus 100, divided by 10 equals, first we subtract 80 from 100 is negative 20, divided by 10 equals a negative 2.0, or let's say, did we bring it out to the hundreds place here, which is two decimal points, tens, hundreds. So the z equals negative 2.00. Now we look at column C in the textbook. 
of course it's going to show you the positive, which is fine. So we, we, we look at then the positive 2.00. So for column C, it's 0.0228, or 2.28% of individuals have a score below George's. Because let's look at this. Since when you fold it in half, both sides would be equal to the same. So what that column in the book is telling you, what percentage of scores go to the right? On this, it would be to the right, which actually is what percentage of scores or proportion of scores go to the left of George's? Because George had a negative, so that means the um, proportion of individuals with a, lower, a score below George's would be 0 0.0228 or 2.28%. Because remember, you multiply by 100 or you just pop over your decimal place to, to points like that. There you go. And then column B, for the next part, we're looking at column B. This is a proportion of scores where from the x equals 80 to the population mean of 100. So what that is, is how many scores would be from the 80 to there. Okay? And it shows the proportion of scores would be 0. 0.4772. Now don't trip up on this because yeah, it's showing it's showing as a positive, so it's saying what well, how many scores go between this section over to here, but remember, it's the same if you like fold this fold this little thing in half if you could do such a thing. So that's the number of scores from his to the mean. The proportion of scores is column B. And the proportion of scores for the next would be from the 100 which is the population mean the mu, to the end of the table, which would be 50% um, of the scores, or a proportion of 0 0.5000. So to figure out how many individuals have a score above George's, what you do is you add these two together. You add the, the proportion from column B to you know, the, other, the other half of it, because really that's only from one half, which is 50% um, or 0.5000. 500 so 0.4772 plus 0.5000 equals 0 0.9772. So basically what this is saying, the proportion of scores above George's is 0 0.9772, or in other words, it will make more sense, like we say percentages make more sense to the root than um, proportions, we would say 97.72% of individuals have scores above George's. This is, again, is an explanation of the Z-score using the data in your circuit textbook.